first of all, I would like to thank all the students because every time is a real pleasure and every time is an experiment. So every time I'm working within a new exhibition, I'm trying to think the exhibition not just a collection of pieces, but a place where people like you, like students or any kind of visitors, they could get inspiration, information, ideas in order to create, in order to have an experience and to create something else. Hi, my name is Sarah Fitzgerald. Um, for the past three months, I've been studying photography at Syracuse University. But in the United States, I study at Tufts University in Boston. And I'm studying psychology, public health, and sociology. Um, so when initially we were proposed with this uh, project, the Holy 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 Project, my mind in, uh, immediately went to food because um, I didn't really grow up with religion in my life. And so food has always been my religion. I love cooking. I love baking. I love eating. So. Um, and that was where I initially looked to for my inspiration. Um, so I decided to go on a kind of macro, very close up scale to look more in depth at um, three different elements, elements, wine, oil, and bread. So you can see my three photographs have these elements in them. Um, so food is a sacred part of many cultures and religions. It is common ground among different peoples. It brings them together on a higher level. In ancient times, to process food was to be civilized. In the Mediterranean, bread, wine, and olive oil were revered for the transformation from their natural state. In addition, consuming them was said to bring you closer to your respective gods, and they do so still today in many cultures. These three foods are the key to a belief system more sacred to some than the church. Uh, throughout my time in Florence, I have seen that food is incredibly important in the Italian culture, especially these three elements. They are separate entities, but together they are one entity. And to eat them accordingly is to acknowledge their importance. To cook with them is to teach their principles. I see them apart and together and delve into their details individually and as a whole. Hi, my name is uh, Sophie and I study computer science in uh, University of Colorado Boulder. But uh, this semester I decided to explore in Florence and uh, study some photography. Um, so, Edward Monk questions our knowledge with his Madonna, and Caravaggio chastises our solution with his own. After seeing Edward Monk's Madonna presenting herself, framed by sperm in Palazzo Strozzi, my questions as a child in Christian school bubbled up again. Growing up in Hebrew school always taught me, question everything. Christian school, on the other hand, to follow what we've been taught for thousands of years. After considering the religious choices my parents offered, I decided. I will not be told what to believe, and I will question everything. Despite deciding Judaism, the question still lingered in the back of my mind. How did Jesus come to be? What we know of the conception of Jesus is entirely a sacred mystery, despite our attempts to understand. Of the many mysteries we familiarized ourselves with, our lives' time has separated us so incredibly we can never fully research what we found to be true. My Madonnas offer themselves Diametrically opposed with two possibilities. One, clean and holy, the Madonna we've come to know and praise, still offering herself, familiar to our ideals, and obedient. The other, a contemporary Madonna. We know this woman. We've seen her walking down the street, tattooed, pierced, and parading her body down New York City, yelling, free the nipples. <laughs> she is strong, confident, and embraces herself as a sexual being. She's still offering herself, but in the light we see today, a contemporary Madonna. Hello, uh, my name is Riley Ryan Wood. Um, I study visual arts and uh, Middle Eastern history at Brown University, uh, but I'm currently studying photography and painting in the Syracuse program. Um, 
In my work, I'm interested in interrogating the binary conflict between the sacred and the profane body. The naked body, particularly the female body, can be seen as profane in one context and sacred in the next. Unfortunately, it appears that contemporary society constantly oscillates between these two categorizations, between the nude and the naked and between the holy and the pornographic. The nude is passive and quiet, and the naked is active and provocative. Trapped in that perpetual duality, we have lost the ability to simply see the body. My work addresses this desire to transform and almost destroy this duality. I challenge this by presenting a body that flirts with both categories and becomes both sacred and profane so that it is neither. Um, I've chosen to address these questions through painting and photography. The title of the project, Silent, Each Contemplating the Other in Both Mirrors of the Reciprocal Flesh of Their His Not His Fellow Faces, comes from James Joyce's Ulysses. In, uh, in my photography, I am reconciling the division through the processes of water. In nature and in human history, water refuses to conform to one guise. Water cleanses and purifies, but it also destructs and distorts. It alters the way we see what is right in front of us. Through the complex medium of the water, the body is neither provocative nor passive. It is simply allowed to exist. Uh, in my painting, uh, I confront the viewer with a large-scale canvas in which the subject can be viewed and value can be discovered micro and macroscopically. The figure itself is barely perceptible on the canvas. Uh, this is in order to gain a certain abstract distance from the traditionally painted figure and its nude associations. The body, however, is detectably female, detectably naked. Finally, she opens her palms outward to the viewer, completing a vulnerable and quiet moment of resolution between what is naked, profane, and confrontational, and what is nude, sacred, and still. Thanks. All right, hello everyone. My name is Jane McGeehy. I study English at Davidson College, but I'm currently studying studio art at Syracuse. I'm an intermediate painting with Kirsten Stromberg, and my series of five is titled Judita. In order to save her people from the threat of the Assyrian army, Judith prays to God for deliverance. She breaches the Assyrian camp, seduces the leader Holofernes, and beheads him in his drunken slumber. Her people celebrate her for her bravery and victory. We remember her today as a parable of true faith, but should this be her legacy? I wanted to explore how sacred texts can be interpreted to fulfill personal agendas and the possible subsequent dangers of differences in interpretations. I chose to work with the Book of Judith for many reasons. First of all, contemporary society views the story of Judith as moral fiction than history. Secondly, the story of Judith is one of fragmentation. Judith fragments the body of Holofernes as a means to further her agenda. Finally, this act of fragmentation is an act of violence, and she is heralded for it. Why is this violence holy? When does violence become terrorism? When is terrorism holy and when is it not? As to not profane the holy, the holy word, I took photocopies of her scripture. I highlighted passages that I found shocking and problematic. By fragmenting these passages from the story, as a whole, I was able to question Judas' heroism, holiness, and legacy. Why is Judas' prayer not enough? Why must the hand of a woman be murderous? Is this what God intended for Judith? I illuminated the sections that asked these questions. I obscured the rest in a mournful black. So this text reads, Throw down their strength and thy power, and bring down their force and thy wrath upon their heads. This piece is called, God's Power is Violence. This text reads, So God heard their prayers and looked upon their afflictions. For the people fasted many days in all Judea and Jerusalem before the sanctuary of the Lord Almighty. This piece is titled, Her Prayer Was Not Enough. This text reads, For all thy ways are prepared, and thy judgments are in thy foreknowledge. And this piece is titled, Her Destiny is Murder. This text reads, and now who are ye that have tempted God this day and stand in front, in, in front of God among the children of men? This piece is titled, Judith Tempts God. And finally, this text reads, 
Surely if thou do as thou, how, as thou hast spoken, thy God shall be my God. This piece is titled, His Gods Kill Him. <laughs> the questions raised by Judah's story are not contained in the past. Just as Judah's heroism is a problem of interpretation, so is any, act, any present act of holy warfare complicated by interpretations or perhaps misinterpretations. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Xue Wing Li. I'm an advanced painting student also from Syracuse University. So for this project, my work addresses the secret through everyday objects. I'm interested in finding things that usually we don't pay attention to. I've chosen to collect things we throw away every day and present them in a way that gives a spiritual meaning. Instead of presenting the object, I have chosen to use light and color to create a secret atmosphere and invoke an emotional response from the viewer. Without any words, we can share a similar feeling. My painting receive is based on one receipt, which I have composed in a way that suggests a crucifixion. The gold leaf which I added to my work references the traditional method of depicting the secret. Gold was a highly valued substance in the past, and it was added to religious painting to indicate a secret, but also to increase their material value. In contrast, the receipt present contemporary value system. The composition and the gold elevate the subject matters, moving beyond a simple still life and giving a sense of the divine. So this painting formed part of an installation which also had a video playing next to it. In the video rebound, I attempt to create a secret environment. It begins with a dark and a mysterious space, which is unknown, quiet, and expensive. However, as the video progresses, light and the perspective continually shift, gradually revealing that the subject of the video is just a receipt. The shadows form and reform, suggesting that our perspective alters our experience. The slow pace of the video is intended to contrast the fast, busy pace of everyday life. Ultimately, this process of revelation shows that everything, even the things we throw away, has the potential to be holy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Courtney Griffith. I'm from California. I study mathematics and studio art at Santa Clara University. And um, I'm an advanced painting at Syracuse Florence. Um, the title of my work is Dorado. My work Dorado explores the moments where the sacred and the profane are experienced simultaneously. For me, a sacred moment is a sublime moment where one experiences vastness and great beauty. A profane moment is the opposite a moment where one's experience is mundane and rooted in the material world. It is rare, if not impossible, to have an experience that is purely sublime. We often strive to experience pure sublimity because it allows us to feel as though we are, are infinite. However, we cannot escape the fact that life is fleeting and our existence is finite. In order to capture this sense of ephemerality and fleeting earthliness in my paintings, I chose to display them as a diptych. Like the dichotomy of sacred and profane, the two paintings in the diptych are two separate parts that ultimately make up a unified whole. For the larger painting, I chose a composition that is reminiscent of a landscape, giving it a vast, expansive quality. In contrast, the composition of the smaller painting conveys the feeling of an interior space, making the painting feel finite and a bit more confrontational. While it is difficult to experience a moment that is purely sublime, I have also found it that it is difficult to experience a moment that is purely mundane. I chose fish as my subject matter because, for the most part, they are considered mundane objects in our society. The title Dorado refers to the type of fish that I have painted, but it is also the word golden in Spanish. This gives the material mundane aspect of my painting an intrinsic value that is nearly sacred. The combination of all these elements is meant to give the viewer a simultaneous experience of the ephemerality of the human condition and the sacred value of everyday objects, 
creating an experience where the sublime and the mundane meet, mix, and ultimately become one. Thank you.